Well, Indian chess is blessed to have so many young talents. Uh, through my videos and articles, I've always tried to bring forth these talents in front of you. And today I want to introduce you to another youngster who's from Kerala, it's, uh, a land of big talents there. Nihal Sarin is from there, SL Narayanan is uh, from Kerala, and now this youngster, Jubin Jimmy. Uh, he's born in 2006, so he's just 13 years old. And he made his first IM norm at the Chennai Open just a few days ago. He has a rating of around 2300 and is tactically really strong. I want to show you his game against Denis Arashenkov, uh, who's an IM from Russia. This happened in the last round and Jubin managed to win this game. Uh, he was, the youngster was playing with the white pieces and he opened the game with D4. D5 and we had the Queen's Gambit accepted, E3, Knight F6, Knight F3, A6, A4. Uh, many times White just takes the pawn and allows B5, but Jubin said, I don't want you to play B5, he goes A4. It has its own upsides, it doesn't allow Black to take space on the Queen side, but also has its downsides, uh, the fact that the B4 square is weakened a lot. We'll see how that affects the game. Bishop c4, c5, takes, knight c6, knight c3, cd, and now you must take with the e pawn. Because anyway, you will reach an isolated uh, pawn position, even if you took with the knight. He takes, takes, and in that position, you would want more pieces on the board. So, in that sense, taking ed4 makes complete. Uh, sense and it's logical you can get your bishop out next move and in return for this weakness on d4 oops sorry in return for this weakness on d4 uh, white has active play so bishop e7 bishop went to f4 and a slightly unusual move by jubin because usually white likes to put his bishop on g5 in this isolated queen pawn positions but bishop f4 is not bad, knight to b4, rook e1, and castles. So what black has done is taken advantage of the a4 move and put his knight in such a way that d5 break is not possible. You could imagine that if in this position uh, black went castle, then white could play d5. And uh, in such a position, although a lot of pieces would be exchanged, white will have a small edge because of his active pieces. So this is what black usually tries to avoid. And he went knight b4, uh, rook e1, castles, and now knight to e5. Play b6, and now bishop g3. Very interesting move by Jubin, and this shows his style of play. Uh, slightly you can say bishop g3 is a waste move because what does it do you know you are just moving the same piece again you could you might as well use it for something more productive like queen d2 but what uh, jubin realized is that with this move if black went bishop b7 he had prepared a threat which was uh, knight into f7 he had prepared this trap if you take uh, rook f7 then bishop e6 and next the queen will uh, come here so let's say queen f8 Queen b3, bishop c8, bishop comes back, rook a7, it's just an illustrative line, take on e7, take bishop d6 and you can see how uh, this rook is pinned, even this rook is pinned, a5, take on e7, queen e7 and now knight a2, this is a nice move, uh, I just wanted to look at what's happening, the rook is anyway trapped here. So not going, I mean right now it's pinned, so after takes uh, king f8, still the rook cannot really move away from f7, so queen b3, knight e4, takes, takes, and in this resulting end game, white has a definite edge. So, you know, <laughs> Jubin by playing bishop g3 wanted to prepare this trap uh, that if black went bishop d7, then this point becomes weak. Instead, what uh, Ereshenkov did was king h8, very interesting, he uh, sort of, um, he saw that this move is coming up 
and he prevented it. But of course the king is not on the best square on h8. So queen d2, bishop b7 and now rook a d1. I like how the rooks are placed on the d and the e files. This is how you should play in queen's uh, isolated queen pawn positions. If you have an IQP, don't put your rook on c1 and d1. That's sort of an old way to play or if you have some play on the queen side, that's fine. But usually the rooks are here so that some point the rook could come in. Also, you can see how knight f7 and this rook on e1 becomes useful. Nf d5 and now uh, I want you to pause the video and try to think what you would do here as white. Just it's no spectacular move or something. I want you to come up with some idea about what you would play. Okay, I hope you had a good think. Uh, taking on d5 doesn't do anything great. You want to start doing something, launch an attack. And so what Jubin played here was very well known theme which happened exactly 84 years ago in the game Botwinik versus Widmar. And uh, I'm going to bring you to the position. This is the game Botwinik versus Widmar, very famous position. Of course, the pieces are in different positions. Uh, one pair of minor pieces have been exchanged. The queen is more active. But what should white do here? Botwinik played a very interesting plan uh, in this position. So I want you to think about it and tell me what would you do here. Well, to all those who found the move f4, excellent work. This is exactly what white should be doing to get in f5, to weaken this d5 square a bit, to make this bishop stronger on this diagonal. This is what we want. And this is exactly what Jubin did in the game. He played f4 and although objectively maybe this move is not the best, you can see that he's trying to do something active. He wants to play f5 at the right moment, sacrifice a pawn and make his bishop stronger on this diagonal. Rook c8, bishop went back and now g6. Black is playing solidly. He wants to play uh, prevent f5 from coming in. Jubin kept the position complicated when knight e4 and now came f6. And so we reach the critical moment of the game. Now it's white to move. What would you do here? Take good time. Uh, your knight on e5 is attacked. Maybe you want to move it. Maybe you want to do something else. Take a think and let me know what you came up with. Well, to all those who wanted to move the knight, knight to c4. Well, you played okay, but you didn't play as well as Jubin. If you want to play knight f3, fine. That's that's also possible, but here it's not the moment to go back, but move forward and that too with precise calculation, Jubin played f5, tremendous move, I love it. The main point is that the queen is going to make its way over here and well, black is in kind of trouble here. Uh, what, what exactly should he be doing? Because let's say you can take on f5 in two ways, it's possible. Uh, also taking this guy just seems bad because I can take bishop e5 and suddenly you are in big trouble, fg6 is coming up, my queen can jump in and this king is very very weak. So taking the knight on e5 is not an option. Uh, black played gf5 in the, in the game. Uh, if e f5, it leads to similar uh, sort of positions after knight into g6 and the queen jumping in. So we won't look at that. Uh, g f5 was played and then knight g6 check. And here black played the move king g7. And Jubin uh, in his analysis makes a very interesting point. He says that my opponent didn't play h g6 because he thought it was a draw after queen h6, king g8 takes, king h8. He thought I will make a draw and so he played king g7. Of course, doesn't make doesn't make any sense because uh, black should be very happy with the draw. He's in a bad position. However, here Jubin had no intentions of making a draw. He actually wanted to win the game and he had seen a tremendous move here. Can you find it? It's uh, white to move. 
So if you're going to waste time, what black really wants to do is play queen e8 and exchange the queens. For example, let's say it's black's move here. Then black will go queen e8. You give a check here and next move queen f7 or rook f7 and then you just save everything. So the best move here is rook e3. Brilliant move. The rook is going to come to the h file after the bishop sacrifices itself somewhere. And if you take this, then you are opening up this diagonal for the bishop. So after knight g5 threatening a mate here, you must take. And now comes bishop e5 check, bishop f6 check, king g8 another check and bishop f6 and game over. <laughs> what a powerful series of moves. Uh, so you can't take the rook here. If you don't take and you play queen e8, then I play check. King, uh, King g8 and now bishop e5. Uh, again a tremendous move. If you take on e3, I have bishop e6 winning the game. That's a nice mate. And if you play something like let's say f4, I go rook h3 and anyway it's a mate on h8. So uh, knight g6. Black played King g7 but now Jubin finish, finishes off this game very well. Uh, he takes on e7, queen e7, knight d6, attacking the rook and also uh, threatening knight into f5, so queen d7. And now he could take on uh, c8, which is good, but he decides to take this bishop and play bd6 again with a double attack here. So a5, bishop f8, rook e6 and rest is easy. I mean, you just double the rooks queen e2, queen f5, exchange a few pieces. It's really not very difficult. Uh, Jubin managed to end the game nicely here. Queen exchange and after rook d6, Ereshenko resigned this game. Uh, tremendous play by the youngster. What I really liked is how he is tactically alert. First of all, he played this move bishop to g3 clearly waiting for his opponent to go wrong and he has seen this trap so he, he loves setting up traps but at the same time there was this maturity of knowing the classics with f4 f5 I am sure he had seen this before if he didn't he found it on the board which is even more impressive and then uh, this brilliant bit of f5 and uh, opening up the queen and here was, I think, the key variation of this entire game where you go rook e3. I simply loved it. Uh, how Jubin had seen everything and he is surely one of the big talents. Um, in fact, I have been following him for nearly uh, two years now. He performed brilliantly at the Commonwealth Championships in 2018. And there I interviewed his father who said that he had left his job because at some point, he wanted a leave to take his son to, a, to the event. Uh, his name is Jimmy, uh, Jubin's father. He wanted to take Jubin to a tournament and his boss said that you do not get a leave for that. And he said, I'm leaving the job. I want to support my son. Uh, that's how, uh, you know, passionate they are about chess and chess improvement. And I really hope that they are able to overcome their financial troubles which they are facing uh, a lot of it and they become uh, stronger players i'm sure that jubin will be able to do it uh, wishing him good luck and i hope you enjoyed this game